There's your orange juice for you. you. There's your three orange. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fat boy. I do love me some um, breakfast. Oh my goodness. This little exit driveway is so tight. I thought I was going to curb something. But anyways, I do love me some breakfast crunch wraps from Taco Bell. They are amazing. Anyways, I just want to show my fat boy moment for the morning before I get on to the main discussion. So one thing I do hate about Taco Bell's breakfast is that they give us this measly little thing of orange juice when you order one. I like McDonald's. They actually give you like a nice cup of it, but that's that's like first world problems. That's what's right. That's, that's the saying, right? First world people problems, something like that. I can't think today. Anyways, let's get to the main topic of today's video. And that is the type of jobs that you want to avoid if you're trying to get into programming or into the programming field. Now, I have lots of experience of applying to certain kinds of jobs and figuring out which ones that probably aren't good ones to be in. Now, when I got done with school, actually even before I was done with school, I had been searching for a job for like six or eight months, something like that. So I've applied to a lot of places. I've had interviews at a few places and haven't heard anything back. But from those few places I have heard from or heard back from and looking at reviews of their company, I've learned some things that you should try to avoid if you're going to try to get into this field. And one of those things is number one is if you see the same company having the same kinds of jobs posted at like several different kinds of job boards i.e. Uh, I can't remember the name of this company. I can't remember their name, but they like always have a position open and they have them open or posted on like several different kinds of web job boards. The thing is when you look into them, and this is one thing I suggest you do before you apply to any job, is look into them, look into the Glassdoor reviews of them, look into what people are saying about them and their reviews of the company, look into them. Do not just apply just to apply because you're desperate for a job because that was me not too long ago. I was very desperate for a job, so I just applied everywhere. Look into the place um, because chances are you're gonna find out that if it's a place that has job postings over several different job boards, they're one of those places with high turnovers for a reason. All right, so I had to redo this video because upon editing the video, I realized for some reason my clip from whatever I was saying uh, last time was missing. So I'm going to finish it now. And by the way, since that, since I recorded that last clip, I remember the name of the company I was talking about. The name of the company I was talking about that I couldn't remember was Reverture. So look out for Reverture because it's not a great place to work at. I mean, all you have to do is look at the Glassdoor reviews, look on Reddit. You can look at all kinds of places and see what people have been saying about them. Uh, one thing that you should really look for whenever you're applying to one of these jobs, if you come across a place like Reverture or another place that I almost worked at, is that what they'll often do is try to tell you that, hey, We'll pay for you to do some training. And then after you're done with your training, we'll guarantee you a job somewhere with one of our partners or something. So the scam is that they'll get you into one of these training sessions if you can get into them. Uh, the thing about Reverture is it's a little harder to get into because they require you to have a bachelor's degree which is crazy that they require you to have a bachelor's degree for how little they'll pay you. But that's besides the point. Uh, if you get to a place like Reverture or this other place that I almost worked for, I'm still debating on if I want to name drop them because they were so cool to me and I feel bad talking bad about them, but they're kind of in the same boat. So yeah, I think I'll talk about them as well in a moment. But for places like Reverture, they'll want you to go do these training and then the thing is, if you get into this training and you realize during the training, you're like, hey, this isn't the place for me. I don't want to work here or be with these people. I can already kind of see what it would be like working for them. And you try to leave, then they'll try to charge you for that training. And what they'll try to charge you is like upwards in the thousands, like in the tens of thousands, I believe. 
um, if I remember correctly, it was in, anywhere between like ten and twenty thousand dollars they'll charge you for the training. So if you get in there, do the training, sometimes they'll have like a two week guarantee thing where um, you have two weeks to decide if you want to stay there or not, and they won't charge you for the training. But if you stay after a certain amount of time, they will charge you for the training, and it is an extremely high price. But then say you're like you decide to keep going through it anyways. After that, they will try to sign you into a two-year contract. And <laughs> in that two-year contract, well, obviously you can't leave. You, you can't go anywhere else. You have to stay with them and wherever they decide to send you to work for two years under <laughs> a very, very cheap, very small salary. <laughs> It's a really underpaid salary. So another thing you can look at is how much they're going to pay you versus how much other people will pay you in that area. Um, this is one place I was work, about to work for. I can't remember what they're called now either. I'm sure if if I remember what they're called, I'll put their name in the description down below. But they they were going to sign me for a contract to your contract for $60,000 if I worked in Connecticut or 50 or I believe $55,000 a year if I worked in their home place Virginia they weren't going to offer much in terms of relocation assistance which is another thing to look for if you're going to apply to any places out of state ask them about relocation because that's very important it's going to help you and they if they're a good company they'll offer it to you so they $55,000 a year for two years. Well, okay. It's not for two years. After the first year, I think I was going to get a raise up to like 60 or 65,000. So the raises weren't bad, but starting off is really hard, especially because, you know, these places will say they'll give you paid training. It is paid, but it's paid at minimum wage. So what you have to look out for with that is during your training, and in the case of this place that I almost worked for, they'll, they might say they'll board you, but if they board you, they're going to charge you money for being boarded. And at this place, they're going to charge me like $500 a month. So I was going to go work, well, go train with them for minimum wage and then have to pay them $500 a month. On top of that, wherever they decide to station you, you're going to have to pay for your apartment yourself. So then minimum wage, already paying them for room and then have to turn around and pay for an apartment or where, whatever, wherever you move to. And then if you need a vehicle for transportation, you got to pay for that yourself. So that minimum wage is not going like very far anywhere. It's not going to get you anywhere. All right. So as you can tell, it's, it's another day, another time. Got my hair done a little bit. So this is uh, part three real quick of what I was talking about. Let's continue what I was saying. So where I left off, I believe I was talking about how uh, minimum wage isn't going to get you like anywhere. So another thing that you need to look out for is you need to ask them about what vacation time and, and sick time and stuff like that looks like. Like what what they will be providing to you, giving to you in terms of sick time and vacation time. So this place that I almost started working at, like I said, I'm still debating on giving out their name. I feel like I should, so people can look out for them. So I'll just say it. Uh, this place called Smooth Stack. They were going to pay, well, I'm gonna start off with how much they were going to pay. I'm pretty sure I said this before, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. It's been a few days. Um, but they were gonna pay me like $55,000 a year just work in their home state and then like 60 for working in another state over weren't going to pay much in terms of relocation and all that jazz i'm pretty sure i talked about that already but the main one of the main reasons i decided not to go with them is because they were not going to provide me with any kind of vacation time and this is very important to ask about vacation is sick time so i don't remember what they were going to say about sick time um i'm I could probably look it up or listen to one of my previous videos that I recorded talking to them about it. But I know for vacation time, they weren't going to provide me with any vacation time. In fact, the only time off that I would actually get would be holiday days off. They'd be paid holidays off 
but I wouldn't have any vacation time to do anything else. And that was especially a big problem for me because there are weddings and stuff coming up and trying to start a family. I need time off and I wouldn't get maternity leave or paternity leave, I guess it would be, or vacation days. That's a big no-no. You do not go to any place that will not offer you any kind of vacation days or paid maternity or paternity leave because then you can't do anything. And can you imagine only getting holidays off, like specific holidays, not every holiday, specific holidays off for two years, can't take any vacations for two years. That is not something that you want to do to yourself. It, it, it would, you would be, oh man, I can't even imagine how worn out and how burnt out you would be. So those are some things that I want you to look out for when you're looking to get a job in the programming force. I'm not even sure why I called it that. In the programming field, look out for places like Smooth Stack and I can never remember the name of the other place that wanted, I, I can't remember them. I'll, I'm sure I'll put the name down below when I remember what they were called, but look out for places that will try to sign you for a two year contract and give you paid training, even though it's like, required trading that if you try to leave early they'll try to charge you like tens of thousands of dollars to pay back for said training two-year contract no vacation time i'm not sure about sick time they probably won't even give you that either just look out for these places don't do it just keep looking for another job somewhere else do an internship that's what i'm doing right now do an internship to get the experience and hopefully the company will hire you afterwards that would probably be the best way to do things as soon as you're like done with school or internships or even before you're done with school. If you can get an internship before you graduate, that would be like the best thing to do. So anyways, uh, these are my tips for getting a job in programming. Um, if you have any questions, ask me down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I guess I'll get to you later. I, I need to head to work now. <laughs> Catch you later.